and the war has just begun. So, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. I do videos on nursing, health, and mental health. If that's something that you'd be interested in, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. In today's video, I will be reading the words of Josh Lerner. He is a medical doctor and he wrote an essay in regards to the basically demoralizing conditions that we as healthcare providers are currently experiencing. And um, his words are so eloquent that I feel like I just want to bring his words to life and I they basically encapsulate everything that I feel. Um, so here we go. I apologize in advance if I get a little emotional, but obviously it just it's just so sad to see how the bottom line of everything. I mean, I've always known this, but truly, 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 corporations care about profit, and we are just cogs in the wheel, and we really don't matter. The CDC is recommending hospital staff use bandanas when masks run out. Hospitals are asking the public to sew masks. Here is a physician's response. Please don't tell me that in the richest country in the world, in the 21st century, I'm supposed to work in a fictionalized Soviet-era disaster zone and fashion my own face mask out of cloth because other Americans hoard supplies for personal use and so-called leaders sit around in meetings hearing themselves talk. I ran to a bedside the other day to intubate a crushing, likely a COVID patient. Two respiratory therapists and two nurses were already at the bedside. That's five N95 masks, five gowns, five face shields, and 10 gloves. For one patient, at one time. I saw probably 15 to 20 patients that shipped. If we are going to start rationing supplies, what percentage should I wear precautions for? Make no mistake, the CDC is loosening these guidelines because our country is not prepared. Loosening guidelines increases healthcare workers' risk, but the decision is done to allow us to keep working, not to keep us safe. It is done for the public benefit so I can continue to work, no matter the personal cost to me or my family and my healthcare family. Sending healthcare workers to the front line, asking them to cover their face with a bandana is like sending a soldier to the front line in a t-shirt and flip-flops. I don't want to talk. I don't want assurances. I want action. I want boxes of N95s piling up, donated from the people who hoarded them. I want non-clinical administrators in the hospital lining up in the ER asking if they can stock shelves to make sure that when I rush into a room, the drawer of PPE equipment I open isn't empty. Instead of offering shallow plans conceived by someone who has spent far too long in an ivory tower and not long enough in the trenches, maybe they should actually step foot in the trenches. I want billion dollar companies like 3M halting all production of any product that isn't PPE to focus on PPE manufacturing. I want a company like Amazon with its logistics mastery. I mean, it can drop a package to your door less than 24 hours after ordering it, halting its two day delivery of 12 reams of toilet paper to whoever's willing to pay the most in order to help get the available PPE supply distributed fast and efficiently in a manner that gets the necessary materials to my brothers and sisters in arms who need them. I want Procter and Gamble and the makers of other soaps and detergents stepping up too. We need detergent to clean scrubs, hospitals, linens, and gowns. We need disinfecting wipes to clean desks and computer surfaces. What about plastics manufacturers? Plastic gowns aren't some high-tech device. They are long shirts, smocks made out of plastic. Get on it! Face shields are just clear plastic. Nitro gloves? Yeah, they're pretty much just gloves made from something that apparently isn't latex. Let's go. Money talks in this country? Executive millionaires, why don't you spend a few bucks to buy back some of these masks from the hoarders and drop them off at the nearest hospital? Let's see all that. 
then we could talk about how we played our part in this fight. Netflix and chill is not enough while my family, friends, and colleagues are out there fighting. Our country won two world wars because the entire country mobilized. We outproduced and outmanufactured while our soldiers outfought the enemy. We need to do that again, make no mistake. We are at war. Healthcare workers are your soldiers. And the war has just begun. It's just sad for us. Um, it's sad because we feel abandoned. We feel like our lives are being treated as if they are expendable. No one is listening to us. We are asking for the appropriate equipment to keep us safe. My dad has rheumatoid arthritis. He's immunocompromised and he's on immunocompromised meds. And every day that I come into contact with him, my fear is I hope and I pray to God that I do not give him something that's going to kill him. I pray that I do not give him this coronavirus or to my mother. I don't know because we don't have massive tests. I don't know if I am killing my family. I don't know if I'm bringing something home. They are afraid to be around me because I'm being exposed at work every single day. There are not, there are not the appropriate measures in place. And our leaders are failing us. A lot of the people that are currently on ventilators are doctors. They are nurses that have been exposed to this. It is just ridiculous. We send our soldiers much better equipped to go fight in a war. Why are we being ignored and why are we being left behind? It is inexcusable. Thank you.